Welcome to HMTG and another video from Outlaws at Thunder Junction, which has brought us so many awesome cards. Before we jump into this deck, please go ahead and hit that like button. Helps me out a ton, sends my videos out to more people and absolutely free to you. So let's take a look at our Gruel Spells list. We kind of know this one, right? The Picnic Ruiner, that was a deck with Gruel. You put a bunch of spells on it, double strike, trample in, finish them off. Your secondary option was always going to be the Scamp. Put a bunch of spells on that with Trample, we get some damage in, you sack it at your end step, fling it to their face, and that's how we would finish them. Then with Murders of Karlov Manor, I added an extra little step to this. Because the whole problem with this win con is, if they killed your Picnic Ruiner, what did we do next? All you had is Scamp. Do we have enough spells? Was it enough? So now with the Pyrotech or Performer, what we can do is we're going to disguise this on turn three. Now it's not a turn three kill like this deck could be, but when you disguise it on turn three, on turn four, you untap. You put a couple uh, pump spells on this, you swing in, and you have a creature that is Ward. Makes it really hard on your opponent now because they're going to have to pay at least four, usually for a kill spell. If it's a bounce spell, three to be able to bounce it. So then typically this is going to get in some damage. Then you flip it up and then you're going to hit them in for the face with rest so this added another element more ways of doing damage and now of course outlaws of thunder junction gave us one of our better cards and this is what i said in my top 10 list for the set was the absolute best and i judged that for best of one pioneer it's really good as well and standard you can put this in so many different decks and best of three i don't think we're going to see it show up as much but best of one absolutely amazing so flying haste and whenever you cast a non-creature spell not just an instant or sorcery to non-creature it gets plus two plus zero, so that super prowess and the most important thing is the plot mechanic because of this we could hold off so if we're playing against control decks so we're playing with decks that have removal we're waiting for that turn where we're able to play two three spells and kill them on the spot with it it's basically you tap out and you're dead so now we're sitting with so many threats every one of our creatures is almost this gigantic threat right pyrotechnic performer turn four kill slicks off show off turn three kill plot turn two three spells on this thing Picnic Ruiner can be a turn three kill. Same thing with our Scamp. And then we go with the Swiss Spear just because it's an early drop, gets in lots of damage. Now, some of the spells I'm not playing that are a little crazy, right? Come on out. One of our best one drops in mono red, probably the best thing we have going for it is the Kimono. Really gonna hurt when this thing rotates, but I wanted to just kind of stick with the prowess. Also looking at rotation proof style cards, right? This will rotate out. The other one will be the Ancestral Anger, but we'll figure out an answer to that. There's lots of other things we could do with this card. So I left this one out. It is a nice bump, but because we have so many ways of killing, I just didn't think it was needed. Then everything else, these are good. The Antagonize, the Blazing Crusade, they're excellent pumps. They're bigger pumps than an ancestral anger, but I like the card draw. So these are just two mana. I just don't love that factor of it. Neither one of them give trample either. So that's why I cut these. The Fugitive Breaker or the code, or Fugitive Code Breaker is a prowess, haste. You love that. Potentially draws cards later, but I think it's a little too slow. And if you actually are playing this as your creature, we're not going to ever get that turn three, turn four win. So I took it out. And same thing with Questing Druid. You like the card draw. You like how it gets big. All great cards. All have been in versions of this deck in the past. And I just left them out because I wanted to try our new card, our Demonic Ruckus. So plot for one. One thing I love about this is, right, you want to do something something on turn one and plotting this is a nice option for turn one as well what you don't like is turn three turn four if you actually have to pay the full two mana because again two mana spells are really the bane of this deck it's really the thing that's going to cause it a lot of trouble so i do like this card because it gives another way of giving trample and it's going to give us a card draw if they kill our spells so right Every single one of our creatures is a must kill threat. Because of that, if we at least can draw a card off of that, it's gonna help us find our other threats. And so that's what's great about this and Audacity, both also giving Trample, Ancestor Angle, Anger, Card Draw again, plus the Trample, Monstrous Rage, Trample, and then Giant Growth is just because it's a big pump spell for only one. Now this card you could kind of play around with and maybe you go with the Antagonize or Blazing Crescendo, but because none of those give you trample, and this is also going to give you that plus three. I like this sort of save you out of cut downs and things like that. It's also a nice trick. You play this first, and then you go, oh, I'm just going to chump block it, and then we bring our trample over the top after that point. 
This deck is absolutely amazing. And I played 10 games with this before this video. I went nine and one. You can see the record right there. So the question is, we're gonna jump on the ladder. We're top thousand mythic. Are we going to be able to replicate those results or is this gonna to start to settle in a little bit more? So make sure you stay to the very end of the video and that's where I'm gonna give you my final thoughts, let you know if I would make any changes of it and let you know what Jiu-Jitsu Belt this deck deserves. So let's go ahead and jump on the ladder and get those turn three kills. All right, so this deck off camera, right, like I talked about is nine and one and then you always have that question once we, uh, let's go ahead and keep this. Once you actually start playing now and you're recording, are you still gonna get that same record? And so I think in this version, before a lot of times you would get the scamp down, I think getting the swift steer, spear down just early is the play here. I think we just swing in and I like just getting the picnic ruiner down, letting them decide, do they wanna take care of this right here and now? Okay, so little sticks, so they got the cut down, so they'll take, oh no. Okay, what was that stick then? Interesting. Okay, they got a bat, so they'll take my slick shot. We have the scamp that would be able to take care of that unless, well, I mean, we'll see, okay, there it is. There it is. So we go audacity, obviously. I think I'm just gonna go scamp and then go ahead and plot this. And we're gonna get in for 10 right now. I guess we could have got in for a little bit more, but I would rather get the scamp down, right? If they decide to block it, we get our slick shot back. I mean, if we did it this way, that would have been 10, 13. So three extra damage. Oh, oh. Okay, very interesting they decided to save just two life to give me back the slick shot. They've gotta have another way or another bat. Right, at least we, oh, okay, oh my gosh. All right, we're just gonna slick shot. Straight up, bring it out. Play this for free. Right? Kind of incentivize them to want to have to kill that. So straight up, go for the throat. So the only issue now here is if they have a cut down, it does get everybody. But we'll put it here because at least these have the prowess. They're going to grow no matter what. And this is still going to be lethal, which just shows you. I mean, this deck just could be so powerful, so many threats. So I talked about it in the intro right before. You have the Picnic Ruiner. That was still a major threat, right? They were actually able to handle that one and take care of it. But now we also have the Slick Shot that is now a gigantic threat. We've always had the Scamp that's a big threat, right? Because once this thing was gonna get in, we could have still sacked it, hit him in the face four or five. If we weren't gonna get lethal, we didn't necessarily have to put the giant, giant growth on it. So it's just threat after threat. Yes, they wanna take care of the one thing, then can they handle the next, and can they handle the next? And we have a very nice balance between spells. And so we are now 11-1 with it. Very happy this first game, as far as recording, we get the win. All right, we're going first with it. Not the greatest, but I mean, scamp into slick shot and depending obviously with the colors we play, that's how you decide if you're gonna play slick shot or you're going to plot it. If we feel like they're a deck that doesn't really have removal, which I mean, which one's even out there do you see that don't? I guess Boros Convoke would be the one that would just straight up play the thing. I'm on a red, I'm not gonna play it. If I see any black at all, yeah. Right, because it's just not that ex worth that extra one point of damage. So we, we have some decent decline. So we can make that, what, four, six? Okay, I think that's game. So 
We start with the thing that is not instant speed. Oh, oh my gosh. Think, 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 think. Missing points of damage right there. And turn three kill. And we even missed some, right? That would have been an extra two points. And take action. And another slick shot as well. All right, and there's your three turn kill. How potentially lethal this deck could be. All right, let's see what we could do. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, Picnic Runer for days. So it looks like we're gonna go old school plan. So what do we want? We want one more land. We want one more one mana spell. I really hate this background, right? For outlaws. I mean, the, I guess it looks fine, but literally no interaction. Like, what can I do here? There's nothing to play with. All right. oh, oh, wait, there we go. Scorpion. You can make it run a little faster. Okay, that's one thing I found. Leave in the comments. Have you found something else? All right, so we got Boar's Convoke. So this is gonna be one of those situations where, oh, okay, we need a land. We get a land, game over next turn. As long as they don't kill my creature. I don't see any way they can, right? They need two mana, and right now they can only do one mana, which... Game. Game, game, game. Right, because that's gonna be eight, and that's gonna, well, no, they can block. Okay, I'm sorry. Not game. Just double check. That's three. That goes to eight. Then it's only another two because you have the roll on it. So that is 10. Okay, so we will just do it this way. So that was a huge mistake again. We should have just played the monstrous rage and not the giant growth. Boy, what a blunder right there. I hope it doesn't cost us this game, but that was definitely a mistake. Okay, okay, we can live through that. Right, this game should already be over if we didn't make that mistake though. Cause we, if we monstrous rage, that was five, they they might not have even blocked and then we actually would have just finished it. So huge mistake. Oh gosh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. To ensure we draw a card, we'll do this. Right, they could Sunfall though. I mean, this, a novice inspector into all of this was not what I was thinking was gonna happen. Okay, that is double strike as well. See if they just straight up have a kill spell. Man, they got something. Yep, destroy evil. Oh, wow, this is brutal. We need a slick shot. Will slick shot do it? That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Slick shot doesn't quite do it. Getting cute. I don't know what I was thinking. Or, okay, there it is. That is good. 
All right, let's see if we could do it this way now. Again, that's what makes this deck at least dangerous. All right, Picnic Ruiner, Slick Shot, and then we have the Pyrotechnor Performer all doing things. All right, so we're gonna take six. Best case scenario, Monstrous Rage, we take 12, we're still okay. Boy, definitely a game we don't deserve. We, I mean, we bumbled this one 100%. Got the Slick Shot. Slick Shot would have got us there as well. All right, so we go right here. We Monstrous Rage. We'll Monstrous Rage again. They take at least seven right now. All right, you don't flip it up until afterwards. You want to force them to pay the ward cost. And then we turn face up and get the win. So, showing every different way where we could actually win with this deck. So that last game, I would really like to know kind of what their uh, whole deck was, their plan. So on the draw, obviously a little harder, because if you go first and they have one mana and you get a Picnic Ruiner about to win on turn three, ooh. Okay, this will be tough. Not gonna lie. If, they, there's a good chance they don't have removal. And we can't quite kill them on turn three. We would have to draw another one mana spell See if they just straight up get the knight out on us right now. Or if they just go for the scry. Obviously, we're hoping for the scry. Okay. So it's going to allow at least a little bit of damage to come in. It's only one point. Not too big of a deal. Okay. So they'll get a second. I mean, they, they might get a second scry. If I was them, I think I would. Now we just have to do the math of, are we dead? Right, so let's say they have it. That's gonna be four, six, eight, 10, 12, 15. So we're still alive. So we wanna just pop shot him right here. So again, we need a one mana spell, right? We need a giant growth and I think that's lethal. That's three, six, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that is lethal. Without it, we don't quite have it. That's five, seven, 14, and that gets two pumps. Yeah, so that's 17, we're not quite there. And the thing is, I don't know if we could really go to a fourth turn. Other thing that's gonna be tough is to actually get through this warden, right? Cause they could get another scry, they hit us for four in the air, and now it has vigilance as well. Okay, they do it. They go bottom. It's gonna be absolutely huge though if we could load up our battlefield. Okay. So we're gonna go right here. We're going to play the audacity. Let's see, if I play this. No, I need them to try and think they could block that. We could attack with both as well. It's interesting, Elise. I think I'm just gonna go Picnic Ruiner, see if we could just pop shot a little bit of damage in. See, if we attack with Swiss Spear, they would know we have a spell. They have to assume with a deck like ours, we're gonna have spells. And this is such an interesting one, right? This Boros Convokes matchup. If we win first, 100% we're winning this. 
Well, I guess if they have the case to kill our creature, right now we aren't set up for that. Also though, let's say they were scrying and they actually found their recruitment officer like they should have. All right, you hate to use Monstrous Rage here, but obviously we have to. So we're gonna hit him for nine, get him down to 10. And then we will plot this. So next turn we could play both, plus whatever we draw. All right, let's see if we're dead though. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Okay, we're dead. If they have a recruitment officer right now, they have it, GG's. And that's the difference between going first and second when a match like this, right? Even if we didn't use that pain land, we were still dead. Just because they have the frontliner, that was that extra point of damage. We couldn't hold back and not attack though. All right, so I just took a look at the stats. 100% on the play with it. I've had six on the draw and I'm three and three. And again, that's really showing the difference with this deck. It's a, a, a best of one specialty, super hasty, and it really needs to go off. And again, we kill them on our turn three or our turn four. Problem is, if it gets to their actual turn four, we've only had three turns and we're not quite there. And we've seen that in the past two games. They got there one turn before we would be able to do it to them. All right, so we're gonna get this down. I'm still gonna go Picnic Runer turn two. Unless I'm feeling like this is Boros, some type of, okay. I say if this feels a bit Boros control to me. So we'll go Picnic Runer. It's the optimal amount of damage. All right, I'm just worried about another white in the temporary lockdown. Okay, Hammer Skull. Do I want to be able to kill that? That'll give it, I mean, it's not for a strike, but it would kill it. I think if we could kill the hammer skull, we go for it. Now it's still hit him for eight. Yeah, I'm doing it. Wow, surprised they did a block like that. They have to know a Monstrous Rage is coming. Maybe they just want to absorb as much as possible. Still hitting them for 10 though. So no more spells. So now it's gonna be the Pyrotech Performer. So the good news is we could disguise one and then the next turn we play it and then we flip the other up. Okay, get to draw a card. It's a land. Play that. Skies, get our creature down. So this way, if they now have a temporary lockdown, it won't work. If they end up having a sunfall, temporary lockdown, at least we get that. That's all that matters. So we have the game. Oh, wait a minute, what? With mana value two or less. That actually hits that? How does it, uh, so is a face down creature mana -less? Okay, that one, that's new to me. Whenever permanent war becomes a target of a spell or uh, disguise, you may cast this card face down for three. That's gonna hit another temporary lockdown, right? No, fight rigging, okay. All right, so that's gonna be three four, five, and that's six. Okay, so that's all we need. So we'll go ahead and play the Slick Shot. See, I for some reason, I thought these were three mana. That's why I played it that way.
And then we just swing in. Flip it face up to hit for five in the face. All right, good game. Got a little scary there for a second. Good knowledge now. Hope we all learn. Temporary lockdown takes care of a disguised creature. Did not think that was the case. All right, let's see if we actually got a control mage and we're not just losing on, uh, let's try it. All right, we, we keep going back to the well. This time we're on the play. We wanna keep that perfect record alive. Oh, we see red. Okay, they do the same thing. Okay, we're gonna force them to have the lightning strike and worst case scenario, draw ourselves a card. Ooh, nice. I actually want to build this one, right? The Boros version of this deck with the Virtuoso Illuminator. Yep, there it is. So here's the question. Are we the dead ones on turn three? How big can we make ours? Not big enough. That's nine. We got the Slick Shot. So we could guarantee they die next turn. Maybe it's, oh boy. Can they turn that into a 10-10 next turn? I mean, they obviously have the potential. It's got menace though. So I guess we just do our thing. No, they don't even need a 10-10. They need it to be a 9-9 nine, nine if I spend one more. Six, nine, not quite there. can't block it so you might as well just attack in all right we're just going for it i don't want that ping i want to see what they actually can do to us okay All right, so that's gonna be four, five, six, seven. That's four, oh wait, 12, 17. Okay, if they play that again. Oh, life gang, that is super sweet. Now we're in trouble. That's, ah, see, that's what makes this deck so good. This card right here, right? They're gonna win the race with that. 14, 17 damage to us. And that's too much life. We're not going to be able to get him. Well played. All right, my turn. Nope, not going to do it. Not going to do it. All right, 18. 23 damage, GG's. And this one, we did go first on it and they were able to get us. It's all about that lifelink. And they had a backup one too. Yeah, see, that's why I'm excited for this deck. I think it's maybe a little bit more vulnerable than this one, but I don't know, maybe not, right? You do have some protection spells. I found it, right? It didn't pump quite as high, right? You have things like your Homestead Courage. <laughs> okay, so they got it all. They just want to pop off in every way possible. Got to respect it.
I go in first, a uh, decent hand, right? A couple pumps, potentially plot or just play the slick shot, depending on what we see. We see black, so 100% we're plotting. Even though we didn't see a stick there, that's fine. It's still better to do this. We could fire off both of these next turn. If they get a ground creature, we could at least trample over it. All right, so they're gonna they're gonna hold up. Again, we play the patient game because of that, and now we're able to disguise. So next turn. We play the slick shot, we double spell onto this, and we can flip it up. Gives them lots of targets they're forced to have to kill. Just hope they don't have the three mana sweeper right now. All right, we have no clue what mono black they are. Are they mono black aggro? Well, I, we doubt aggro. Ooh, okay. Very nice. They do go shields down though. Let's see if this is enough. I don't think it is. It's gotta be close though, right? 18, we're off by one. All right, down to one. We have the scamp though that could give that last little ping. Right, you need double kill spell. It's gonna help us draw two cards. So obviously this will gang them some life so they could have some marches potentially. We have a chance of drawing an instant when they do kill one of these right now. So what I love about this though, right? We have the must kill. They had to kill the pyrotech performer. Otherwise that was gonna pop them, right? Force them to tap out. We then get the slick shot show off going into town. They were saving that for that, but then realized that had to be the threat that was dead. If we had a picnic ruiner, that then becomes the other must kill. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I guess I for, okay. Whoop, whoop. Gets the draw off of it. Little top deck magic. I was gonna say, I forgot about the gaining life that they could gain that much life. All right, last game, that one hurt. Boris Convoke wanted that win. Again, total difference between us going first and them going first. Not a greatest hand and on the draw again. I'll have to double check my record too. When I was uh, nine and one with the deck and then 10 and one, how many of those games was I on the play? Obviously, that's a huge difference maker. So this is pro this is gonna be a scamp. Probably, if it's mono, okay, it's mono red. So if that's the case, do I just plot it? Right, the smart thing is to just plot it. You don't want a basic play with fire killing this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to plot. And so this is really our expensive option. If you wanna make this deck go faster, you can get rid of it. But what's really nice is this is a potential turn four kill. Ooh, okay, is it spells? They still have a lot of things that do two damage. All right. So we could plot this. They're putting us on a clock right now. All right, we have lethal turn four. Will we live to turn four is going to be the question. Just like last game, right? We had to have killed them on turn three. So the idea is we disguise this turn four we give it its pumps, we flip it up, and the sh slick shot, oh my gosh. It's another five. Double strike. All right, so we're at one.
We have no option but to play this. Pass the turn. We should have just played Slick Shot right there, actually. We should have just started getting in. If they have any burn, they kill us. So at least getting one point of damage, something we missed. We also could just double block. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value three or less, it does one damage. All right, GG's. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can't get by that. Everything we have is... All right, sweet little deck. I like the Viper there. Really would have hurt us. Again, that was another situation, though, where if we were on the play, we would have been able to take that. Ooh. That, that can't be a keep, right? Yeah, no. You could do this. Just because that's a little bit more expensive, I... Th it's a spell though. I guess it's the scamp. Let's keep six and let's toss the scamp. All right, the scamp isn't quite as valuable in this version of this deck. Right, you have an option. You can kill with it, but it requires you to right, put three pump spells basically on it. Do that ton of damage. All right, we see that. You know, seeing that, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna swing in with the slick shot. Gives us our option now to at least play both of these. I really want to play that. If they temporary lock down us. We are feeling bad, but we're going to at least try. So we did have the option there of just playing the picnic runer and then killing them next turn. But this at least gives us the option. If they do temporary lock down us, we have a chance. Angel. Ooh. So that's going to give five damage. And this is five as well. So there's two targets you want to take care of. It's going to be here. So we only draw one card. But now if we draw any instant... I'll do it. Ooh, we get there. All right, so really paying attention to that record. Ooh, boy. Let's mulligan that. Paying attention to the record on the draw, and we're now seven and three with it. We'll keep this. All right, what's... We could disguise that, play the Picnic Ruiner, turn three, bop, bop, bop. That immediately draws the card. You know, it's our new one. Let's try it, right? We have, we have to learn about a card. I'm, I'm torn. I have liked it. I've hated it. So, I mean, because you hate it when you have to play it late. So we plot this. And this is the tricky part, right? If they have a burn spell for my Picnic Ruiner, we're just done. I think we have to play this smart and actually wait. Question, are we just dead though if we do that? Well, we could go Picnic Ruiner and put that on it. Force them. Hmm. Turn, so turn three, we play this. We leave up a giant growth as protection. The next turn we audacity it and uh, that's four, that's seven, that's 14. We're just gonna try this. Part of me wanted to also play the mountain. Oh wait, never mind. We don't. We don't have it. We don't have the extra green. Okay, so I wanted to do it that way as well. Oh, they are going. There's the slick shot. That's gonna come in for free. All right, now we're wishing we played the picnic ruiner. Yep. 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 
No blocks, and that's just gonna be too much damage for us. We have a slick shot of our own. I think we play it. No, we don't. It's got haste. We have to go this route. I need some chip shot damage here. So these two are gonna hit me. I could block the swift spear. Okay. That's six right now. They're drawing a card. That's gonna be seven. Really cool putting that in a deck like this. All right, they're gonna get that now. They have a spell. Super cool though. I like the idea of all this, but again, it's just these super aggressive, super fast decks. Super fast decks on, on the draw, and it's just so hard to beat them. All these situations, every one of these losses we've seen so far, we're on the play, we win. And again, maybe that's not the deck you like then. You don't like that 50-50 scenario if you're on the draw, but if you're on the play, you win every single time. So maybe that's not fun for you, but if it is, could be a deck for you. Ooh, highly ranked opponent right here. Let's see what we could do with him. All right. Uh, let's try it. We're on the play. I mean, just kind of a mono red with some big bumps. So the good news is, right, on the play with a double Swift Spear, we get to go Swift Spear into Swift Spear Audacity. I mean, that's a pretty nice hit. The bad part is if we see... Okay, and it's tapped. Oh, ooh. Or do we like to draw? Let's just go with the damage now, right? Right now, what are we racing? We're racing temporary lockdown. We're kind of throwing all eggs in one basket here. So let's just do this first. See if we can get our card draw. At least we get a scamp. See, that would, that would be 7, 10, 11, 12. Not quite enough. Let's bring it in. Do we go for it? I'm going to be greedy. I'm going for it. If you're going to use your kill spell, right, at least we draw a card off of it. We're trying to get him to one. Because the thing is, let's say they have... Okay, nice. All right, now we have no more spells we need to draw. The whole idea is like maybe the scamp. Because if they had a temporary lockdown, them locking up that board and then just having the scamp wasn't that big. It's not good. Not good at all. All right, we'll go Scamp, though. Gets around No More Lies mana. All right, little flooding, right? Don't like to see five lands. You like to get to... Ooh, 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 okay. The CGB tech. I wonder, did CGB do that or did... Somebody else do that for a while and he kind of took that idea. Oh, double top. Do not like that. Bum, bum, bum. And there's the lockdown. All right, that pretty much seals us. We could late game. They're going to chump block right here. Right, definitely worth, worth losing that creature to save yourself five life. Mm. 
Feeling a wandering emperor. Oh, I'd love for you to activate that land. All right, we could have put Audacity, potentially go for seven. My thinking here, ooh, okay. All right, not playing Picnic Ruiner, right? We're gonna save that. We can't fall into another temporary lockdown. Especially with that tap land, I was feeling Sunfall in their hand. Memory Deluge, just as good. They could also just already have it. Two, four, six. There's the temporary lockdown, okay. Oh, that is so good. Okay, so we get this. We have the No More Lies mana still up. Hard counter. All right. That hurts. I was going to say, if that was able to stick. So, unfortunately, a Swift Spear and just one Scamp isn't the, like, hottest thing in the world. First things first, let's see if this could stick. And now we put it here. So at least we'll draw a card off the audacity if they... So Wandering Emperor is obviously their best bet. They need something to kill that. They need to exile it too. Gonjo. Mistake. I guess we went in with the slick shot. We would have had it. Let's force him to have it. Right now they know they have to answer one of these without a kill spell. They need to have... Memory Deluge. All right, you only have one man up, so we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Wow, what a close one. What a tough, tough battle. We get there. Welcome back, and those of you who are awesome enough to stay to the outro, a little bit of information. If you watch my videos, you normally see game one, to the end is exactly the order I played it. Now this time I bounced around a little bit. I did what most of the popular YouTubers did and I played actually 22 games with this and I just showed you some of them. But early on I put, yes, the first game was my actual first game, I talk about it. But then after that, right, I wanted you to see the different wins. I wanted the Slick Shot to win. I wanted the Pyrotech Performer to win. So I wanted to show you all the different ways this deck can win. And then I sprinkled in a loss here or there. And overall though, here's my record. So you can see I am 21 one and 11. We were nine and one going into recording. That means I ended up going 12 and 10. Not fantastic, right? Just a little over that 50% record, but you could see on the draw, absolutely brutal with a deck like this. And you could see in some of those matchups, I know I didn't show every single loss, but I know in five of the games and a few that I showed you, they were on the play. If I had one more turn, they were dead. That's five losses that could potentially turn into wins if they didn't just draw just perfectly, okay? We also were able to handle control. We did decent against Boros. We did 50-50 uh, against Mono Red. And in fact, you could see 
we lost all our matches in the mirror, right? I went against Gruel twice and they were on the play twice and they were able to just pop off and do it a little bit faster than we were able to. So those were two games where if you give me another turn, I'm gonna be able to win. I love the Boros version as well. That's another one I wanna make a deck of. You love the Illuminos, the Virtual Loot, Double Striker, one, one for two, right? Okay, you love that because it's just as explosive as this, but you also have that hidden, I could gain some life and just beat them over the top. So I love that deck as well. Definitely one I'm gonna wanna do later on and a bit of a budget deck as well. If you look at this thing, right, we're obviously we have the rare lands, you have the slick shot, but, and the performer in this version. But when you're talking about the gruel and everything else, nothing else is really rare. So as far as not a full budget deck, but as far as a lot of your top tier decks, it certainly is. Now, I get it for those of you who won't, don't like a deck like this. There's no interaction, right? We don't have to play with fire. We don't have a lightning strike, right? We're going to do our thing. They're going to do their thing. And we saw if they go first, sometimes they just do their thing first or faster than we do. But oftentimes this deck is going to get a win. As far as what Jitsu belt I would give it, I'm going to give it early season brown belt. Now, this might change as our meta shifts, right? But if you're able to sneak in and get those early victories and very fast, it's going to be a great deck for you to just climb the ladder very, very quickly if you're looking for something like that. Very short games, right? If you look at all my games there, what do we have here? 32 games, took them about an hour, 40 minutes. That's it. That's a lot of gameplay for that amount of time. So as long as we're able to keep kind of this pace and keep it a little over 60% as far as the win rate, definitely a great one to climb the ladder. But I do get it for people who want a little bit more interaction, right? This is pretty straightforward. However, there is definitely some thinking, right? If you watch my game against control, if you watch some of those, it's really plotting and planning. What do they have? When is the removal spell? When is the proper time to actually just deploy everything, right? We plot this. We were waiting for the right moments. Then we have our backup plan, Pyrotechno Performer. Okay, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. Let's make sure we can get this down, pump it up enough, and fling in for the rest of the damage. So there's definitely some skill to the game with this one, just maybe not as much as some of the other ones. The Ruckus, I did like it. I love it if I plot it on turn one. Absolutely hate this thing if we actually have to play it. So this, if there was ever going to be a cut, it might come here at some point. I like the Ancestral Anger because, again, it gives us the trample and it gives us that card draw. It doesn't stay on for good. So we know we'll lose this one in a few months. So as far as cuts that will eventually happen, it might be these eight cards. And what else do we get? As far as the creature lineup, though, I absolutely love all this, right? I think it's gonna be really hard to get rid of any of these 20 creatures. Maybe you bump up, right? Maybe you put a couple code breakers. Maybe you do put the Kamano in as a couple copies. But overall, those 20 creatures, I think, need to stay. The Scamp would be the one I would probably cut if I cut any of them, just because in this version, you don't quite have the thing where you pump it up enough. A lot of times with the Scamp, what you have is the card that you fling to their face as well. Um, the cell sword. So having the cell sword, you pump this up, let's say at six power, you hit them for six, then you cell sword it, does another six, plus the scamps triggered ability does another six. So the cell sword is the other thing. Maybe you want just a couple copies in here. So I could definitely see just trimming a couple things. Maybe you get rid of two demonic ruckuses just to have two of those cell swords. And that might be the thing that would put this one over the top. But I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are your thoughts? What changes? Is, did you like this deck? Do you hate this deck? Because I can tell you right now, all over the ladder, Slick Slot Show Off is running rampant. This is definitely going to be a card that some of us might get very, very sick of. I was super hyped on it before the set. I've been enjoying it since it's coming out. But again, it might be one of those cards. Three years in standard. How much are you going to hate this thing after a while? How many times is this thing going to kill you? But there's one absolute blast. Fun games in there. I did enjoy playing kind of 22 games off of camera and things like that with a deck like this, just to really give you a slightly better sample size and give you a good representation. Let's say I just filmed and I went nine and one. You would think this thing is just the best thing in the world, but now we could really start to see where it's settling in. You could see if you're on the draw, it's definitely a tough one. You're on the play, that is a good win percentage, right? This thing is meant for best of one. Take advantage of scenarios like that. So until next time, never forget, you're an ace. Thank you so much to all my ace MVPs for really showing me consistent support and to all you nerd assassins out there who always are constantly liking these videos, giving me those watch hours and giving me comments. I appreciate all of you and I absolutely love this community that we've built. I hope we just keep growing from here. So once again, 
thank you to everybody out there.